Hi there guys, uh, Steve here from Coils and Coins Detecting and uh, welcome to another video. Um, in this video here, I just wanted to talk about what I think is probably one of the most underrated uh, features uh, on the Equinox machine and that is recovery speed. In my opinion, it's probably one of the most important functions of the machine. Um, and yeah, it's often overlooked just because uh, it, of its simplicity, but it's one of the most uh, valuable tools I think you have on the machine. Um, so what is recovery speed is the first thing. Um, well, probably the easiest way to describe recovery speed is it's the speed at which the detector can detect a target, report that target back to the control panel, uh, and back to the user as a target ID and a tone, and then reset ready to hear the next one. So it's, it's about how quickly it can recover, literally how quickly it can recover between signals. Um, it's also called reactivity on some machines, um, and um, it's probably got a few other terms as well, but the most common one is recovery speed or reactivity. Um, so when the recovery speed is slow, what that means is that the detector is being given more time to report the information from a target back to the user. Um, and what that means is that the, um, the, the response time is greater. So there's more processing power being dedicated to this period of time where the detector is, is analyzing what's coming back from the target in the ground. Um, and this results in a longer tone generally and a fairly stable um, target ID or, or a target ID that's on, you know, on screen for longer before it changes. Um, now, a slower recovery speed is valuable in that you know, you, the, the user is learning more about the target because of this longer time frame. But the side effect of that is that other targets that are very close to the primary target may be completely missed during the time it's reporting on that one target that it can see. And even worse than that, um, if you've got multiple targets alongside each other, beneath each other, that kind of thing, um, in some situations you might get uh, an average um, response, an averaging of the all the targets, and that might sound like junk. And that's why you will sometimes get this um, kind of junky mixed target tone. Um, that you just might ignore because it just sounds horrible. So that's what happens when you've got a, uh, can happen when you've got a slower recovery speed. Um, with a faster recovery speed, obviously that means the detector has been given less time to report the information to the user, um, less processing time dedicated to that particular target, and that results in a shorter, sharper tone and a faster changing target ID on the display. Um, the trade-off here is that the faster recovery speed can result in um, deeper, weaker targets that are kind of on the boundary of what the detector can see. Um, it can report those as very, very weak tones or potentially not report them at all because there's not enough time for it to process that information and then report it back to the user. So that is a trade-off. But obviously on the other side of that coin is that the benefit is that if there are a lot of targets very close together, then we've got a much better chance of hearing them all independently because the processor is resetting so quickly that it's ready to hear the next target when it encounters it. So there are pros and cons to both things, but I think the, the Equinox, both the Equinox 600 and 800 have already have excellent default settings for recovery speeds. And generally speaking, you don't really need to change them, but there are situations where it's definitely an advantage to change them or to at least um, you know, try, try them with a bit of a change and you might see some improved results. Um, related to all of this, I think it's important to talk about target masking. So this is where, related to what I've just said, um, if you've got targets that are directly beside or underneath uh, another target, um, and they're being averaged out. So that's that's something that can happen when you've got multiple targets all clustered together. And if there's one large dominant uh, object on top of sh uh, smaller, less dominant objects or beside less dominant objects, that um, larger object, particularly if it's a ferrous object, that can just dominate the signal. 
um, to the point where you don't hear anything else but that signal. So that's a, a, a target masking effect. Um, and you'll also find, um, sometimes you'll find that a shallower object, even though it may not be uh, as big as uh, objects below it that are deeper in the ground, sometimes these shallower objects will completely dominate the signal as well. And so you hear that top uh, target, the shallower one, but you don't hear what's be below that because it's being masked. And that's why it's so important to dig a target, when you dig a target out, to rescan the hole because when you take targets out of the ground, all of a sudden you're opening up um, the uh, ability of the machine to hear what was below them. Um, and this is why it's such a good idea to search areas that have a lot of targets in the ground because even if they've been detected before, there's a very good chance that there's still targets in there that have been missed. So that's something to, to consider. Um, so when do you use high uh, recovery speeds and when do you use low recovery speeds? Because that's really what we want to know. So as I said before, defaults are generally pretty good and you don't really need to change them too much. But sometimes it's worth considering a change uh, in, in these settings. So for, um, for a higher recovery speed, um, generally speaking, I would want to use that uh, in an area where there are a, where there's a very high target density. So what I mean by that is that there are many, many targets all beside each other, below and beneath each other, both ferrous and non-ferrous targets. Um, so the target density is very, very high, uh, and you want to give the machine as much chance as possible to hear them all. Um, when would you want to use a slow recovery speed? Um, well, you'd want to use it in situations where you've got few targets, but those targets may be deeper. Uh, and also, mineralization is important. Um, in highly mineralized soil, you want to use a higher recovery speed. Um, and in, a, in um, a less mineralized soil, a lower mineralized soil, you, you want to use a slower recovery speed. And that's because the mineralization in the ground is not affecting the um, reporting as much. So. You know, if, it's, if there's low mineralization, you can get away with the machine having a more amount of time to analyze the data that's coming back because it's not being influenced by the mineralization that's in the ground and vice versa for, um, for a high uh, mineralization situation and, and high recovery. Um, it's also something to talk about that's absolutely critical to the whole thing is target density, which I touched on before. So. What you need to do, um, and this is really an underrated thing, is you want to know the target density of the area that you're detecting in because that's going to dictate uh, what recovery speed to use. And, and so often this is overlooked. The only way you're going to know what the target density of an area is, is if you hear every target. And because most of us are discriminating out all the ferrous targets, often we'll even discriminate on the um, equinox will discriminate below 15. If you're swinging the coil around in an area and you have all those targets discriminated out, you're only going to hear those higher tones. So you're not going to get a, a very accurate picture of how, um, how densely populated the area is with targets. So to hear the target density, you have to turn all metal on uh, is one option. So you bring back in all of the ferrous signals as well as the non-ferrous signals. Um, or if you want to discriminate uh, targets out, that's fine. But what that means then is you're going to need to bring in a, th a threshold tone. Because what happens with a threshold tone is if you're swinging and the detector goes over a, um, a target that's been discriminated out, the threshold tone will null out. So it'll blank out and you'll hear it. And, and if you keep hearing it blanking out regularly, then obviously there are a lot of targets in the ground. Um, same as if you've got all metal in, you'll hear every target um, and you will hear all the targets, whether they be ferrous or not ferrous, and this will give you an idea of how densely um, populated the area is for targets. So if you find that the area uh, has a very, very high target density, then that is your cue to increase the recovery speed. And by default, um, in Park 1, I think recovery speed is set to 6. 
If you're in a hot, um, very, very um, dense area with targets, you'd go up to seven and possibly even max maximum of eight. And that'll give you the best possible chance of hearing good targets. Uh, if you're swinging and the, um, you know, the target density is very, very low, well then you might drop it to three, um, three or four, possibly lower, but I probably wouldn't recommend it, but I would say three or four. And then, um, yeah, you'd probably um, be better off in that situation. But you need to know what the target density actually is before you can make a judgment on the, uh, the setting that you need to use. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about there is the Equinox 600 versus the 800. And I will put a little table up in the corner here uh, of the screen just to compare so you can see the, the comparison. So the Equinox 600 has a range of one to three. So it has settings of one, two, and three. The 800 though has a, a range of one through to eight. Uh, and when you compare the two, um, on the 600 a setting of one is equivalent on the 800 to a setting of two. And then on the Equinox 600 a setting of two is equal to a setting of four on the Equinox 800. So that basically the numbers double. Uh, and then a setting of three on the Equinox 600, that's, a, that's equivalent to six on the 800 machine. So what that means then is the Equinox 800 actually has a, a larger, a wider range than the 600 does. It's got one additional um, uh, low recovery speed setting of one, and it has two additional um, high recovery, uh, sorry, uh, fast recovery speed settings of seven and eight that the 600 doesn't give you. So it does give you a wider range on the 800 machine. Um, so that is a bit of an advantage with the 800 machine. It's capable of a very, very um, fast recovery. Um, and so you can see it on that table there. So what, I, what I've also done uh, for this video is I'm gonna now go across to a bit of footage that I shot in an old trashy dump site, which I've been searching for quite a while and, and people who have been watching my videos will have seen me find quite a few coins in this site. I did a bit of a video where I turned all metal on and I was just um, just swinging across this dump site uh, area and you can hear how many targets there are in the ground. And I've also tried to illustrate um, what changing the recovery speed does to what the tones sound like. So. Um, you go and check out this video um, that's coming up now and just hopefully it just solidifies what I've said. Because this particular area is so dense with targets, I had my recovery speed running at seven and eight pretty much all the time. Um, I had my sensitivity drop down to about 20 uh, because most of the targets were quite shallow. And if I hadn't increased my recovery speed, there, I wouldn't have had much of a chance of hearing any, you know, any many of the good targets that I did find. So um, we'll cut across to this video, and um, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching this um, this part of the video. But now, um, yeah, we'll go across to the video that I shot, and hopefully that will um, that will help with the explanation of, of recovery speed. All right, with this real quick video, I'm just going to demonstrate recovery speed and the difference uh, certain settings can make. Uh, so to illustrate it, I've got a dump here. It's loaded with iron signals and other signals. And I've been picking over it for a few weeks now, just pulling good targets out. But if I just scan this pile uh, in all metal, uh, let's see, sensitivities, we'll drop it to 18, 16 even, because most of it's pretty shallow. Um, and I'm going to go with recovery speed of one, which is the slowest recovery speed. Now I'm just going to swing across and have a listen. So can you hear all those targets? And hear how spaced out they are. They're long. The target's tones are quite long. Now what I'll do is I go back into recovery and I'm going to boost it right up to 8. And now I'm going to do the same speed swing and you listen to the difference. You hear all those really short targets? Iron and other short targets? And with a higher recovery speed, it allows the machine to reset faster in order to hear the next uh, signal and report the next signal to you. 
if you're using a very uh, slow recovery speed, very low uh, recovery speed of one or two, then uh, the machine will reset much more slowly uh, and it's good for hearing uh, targets that are deeper. Um, if, you, if you swing slowly, you'll hear, you'll hear deeper. And if you go for a very high recovery speed and you swing uh, quite quickly, it'll pick up the targets and, and it'll reset faster. So here there, there's a 16 there. And all those targets in there, all iron targets, it's here in every single one of them, and it's reporting every single one of them back to me. Now if I go in there and drop it back to one again, and we go across the same area, you'll be able to hear there are much fewer targets. Especially those iron targets. So the point that I'm trying to make is that if you've got a very trashy site, with lots and lots of targets in it. Um, you'll want to increase your recovery speed up to at least six, I would say, so that the machine has a chance to reset and uh, quickly and then report the next target that it sees straight back to you. Otherwise, you may well miss targets that are in between if the targets are all jammed together. So give it a go. If you've got a very busy, trashy site, in increase your recovery speed up to at least six, probably seven or eight even, and give that a try instead of one, two, three, which will uh, mean it's a lot harder to hear, hear all those individual targets. Anyway, good luck with all of that. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Okay, so hopefully that does help with uh, with the notion of recovery speed and, and how to use this setting. As I said in the intro, I believe this setting is probably the most overlooked setting of all on the Equinox, and it's, it's probably one of the most powerful features of the machine. Uh, alongside its uh, multi-frequency capability, uh, the speed of this machine is really um, one of, if not the um, most potent features that the machine has. So we really need to, to capitalize on that capability, I think. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it's been useful to you. Um, if it has, please leave a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. Um, really appreciate it if you could. And then you'll catch all the other videos that I release. Um, and leave a comment if uh, yeah if you have any questions I'm, I'll do my best to answer them and uh, other people who who see the videos hopefully can also answer these um, if you've got any information about recovery speed that you think others would benefit from and that I would benefit from I would certainly be keen to hear that so yeah thanks for watching and uh, I will see you guys on the next video bye for now.